Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our five minute histories videos and today I'm here in a small, a small park on Federal Street in the Greenmount West neighborhood just a stone's throw from Greenmount Cemetery and we're going to talk about little free libraries like the one behind me. If you've never run into one of these in Baltimore, there are probably 65, 75, something like that, but if you've never run into them, there are little boxes filled with books and you can take one for free any time of the day or night and if you're able you can put one back and share it with somebody else but we'll get to that. Um, Little Free Libraries has a serious mission that we're going to talk about and that's to encourage readership and promote community but we're also going to have a little bit of fun and we're going to take a miniature architectural journey uh, through a number of these uh, wonderfully whimsical uh, little trading book trading boxes. All right have to start by saying thank you to a woman Sandy Myers who is a Little Free Library aficionado during during the COVID times, uh, she made a point to go out and uh, track these down and photograph them. Um, and I want to say thank you to her for all the great information. Little Free Libraries is actually a nonprofit organization. Um, it was founded in 2010, and it's uh, in Hudson, Wisconsin. And it was founded uh, uh, by a gentleman named Todd Bowl. And the mission is a very serious mission. Now, let me read you their mission statement. It says they are to be a catalyst for building community, inspiring inspiring readers and expanding book access for all through a global network of voluntary volunteer led little free libraries and they claim to be the world's largest uh, book sharing movement in fact i believe it they've got 75,000 little free libraries in all 50 states and 100 countries around the globe there is a little free library in the subway in new york there's a little free library in a police station in los angeles there's a little free library in a refugee settlement in Uganda. There's one on the Appalachian Trail for the through hikers. And there's one on a trail in the Yamo Peninsula in Siberia for reindeer herders and their families. They are literally all over. Here in Baltimore, I said we've got about 65, maybe more, um, including the one here. And in fact, we've got a little bit of a Baltimore connection, uh, a tenuous one, but hang in there with me. Um, Todd Bowl, the founder, uh, said that he wanted, he was inspired by Andrew Carnegie, the great philanthropist who donated uh, tons of money for lots of causes, including libraries. Um, Carnegie, in turn, was inspired by our own Enoch Pratt, who gave away part of his fortune to start the nation's leading free public library that was open to all. Um, um, in, in 1905, Carnegie came to Baltimore and was inspired by what Pratt had done and gave us $500,000 to build 20 branch libraries. So if you grew up in Baltimore and went to one of the Pratt branch libraries, you can probably thank Enoch Pratt and Andrew Carnegie uh, for, uh, for that experience. Um, at the end of his lifetime, uh, Carnegie, who famously said, the man who dies rich dies in disgrace, meaning make a lot of money and give it all away, he had... Uh, uh, his generosity had built 2,509 libraries. And that number is important because Todd Bowl wanted to do better. He wanted to do at least one better. He had a goal of building 2,510 libraries. Um, of course, he way surpassed that with 75,000 around the globe today. He got off to kind of a slow start. He was fixing a garage in his home in Wisconsin and took out a door, a wooden door, but he didn't want to throw it away. So he built a little memorial. He used it to build a little memorial to his mother, who was a former school teacher. And he built a little box and put it on a pole and filled it full of some of her books, um, hoping that people would come by and take them. Started out slowly, but then he had a yard sale. And people came from all over and hopefully bought some stuff from his yard sale, but also fell in love with, uh, with the idea of these little free libraries. And, uh, and soon the demand was overwhelming. At first, he built them, if you called him up, he'd build one for you with the help help of a friend of his, uh, a gentleman named Henry Miller, who was an Amish craftsman, but they soon were overwhelmed. Help came to the rescue. One of the help was in the form of prisoners in Detroit. Uh, Detroit's prisoner population built 400 little free libraries that now dot that city uh, all across. Um, it, today, you can order a little free library online. We'll put their website uh, up there for you. Um, or 
and you can order blueprints to build your own. Or you can just set out and do it on your own. There are no rules for what they should look like, um, but each one is cared for by a steward who makes sure that it's full and is looking good. I couldn't find uh, who the stewards were for these, uh, but if you are one or are a steward of any of them, um, I'll say a sincere thank you on behalf of all of us at Baltimore Heritage. All right, so let's go on a virtual tour, a virtual architectural tour in miniature um, of a number of these libraries. Let's start out on Nat Felt Avenue in Mount Washington. Here we've got a little free library with cedar siding and a cedar roof and a barn green front with a pitched roof and a little loft on top. This is definitely an architect at work converting a barn into someone's living space. Let's hop over to Green Spring Avenue in the Cheswold neighborhood. This one has a wonderful corrugated roof and a rustic finish to it, and it shows the slogan of all little free libraries, take a book, share a book. All right, number th stop number three, we'll go over to Shenley Road in Tuxedo Park, the Tuxedo Park neighborhood. And this one reminds me of the cubby hole locker I had as a kindergarten in the early 1970s. The colors are spot on. It's either that or maybe a simplified piece of artwork from Maudrian, the artist. All right, let's head on over or head on south down to Ross Street near the Harris Teeter parking lot in Locust Point. This is exactly what a one room schoolhouse should look like. I only wonder whether the bell on top actually works. All right, let's come back up north and head over to Wyman Park on Keswick Road. Do you remember what Roy G. Biff is supposed to help you remember? We'll let you ponder that. In addition to the lizards, this little free library also seems to have some architectural thought behind it, a slanted design and all. Maybe the builder was inspired by the famous modern architect Lienzo Piana. I don't know. All right, uh, stop number six, I think, um, Gilman Terrace, back over to Wyman Park. Well, howdy, partner. We have a little bit of the Old West here in Baltimore, uh, but instead of the fake upper facade of some building on the set of a Western movie, we have the great big word, books. It's fabulous. All right, stop number seven, Mom's Market in Hamden near the Rotunda. This one also has a little bit of rustic design going on, maybe in keeping with Mom's uh, commitment to using organic uh, produce only. Um, and I love the hinges uh, and the latch. Maybe the founder's Amish friend, Henry Miller, uh, maybe they were inspired by him. And if you look closely on the inside, you can see a book on the Scottish Robin Hood, uh, Ro Rob Roy. And I bet someone snatched that up uh, very quickly. All right, final stop. This is our last one. And we're going to go over to 25th Street, right between the Harwood and Barclay neighborhoods. And I'm going to end here with a quote that's inscribed above the entrance of the New York City Post Office on 8th Avenue. And it's taken from the ancient historian Herodotus, who praises the valor of the mounted Persian postal couriers as they fought against the Greeks in 500 B.C. Neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor gloom of night stays these couriers from the swift completion of their appointed rounds. That, of course, is the unofficial motto of the United States Post Office, and maybe should be the official motto of all of the stewards and the volunteers who help to keep these little libraries going. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.